So here's, I'm fascinated by hacktivists. Those people who are hackers on the computer, but they do it for activist reasons. So they're trying to do good through their hacking, right? And I think that's sort of what Jesus is getting at here in this parable, right? So here's this guy who's fired, this guy who's cheating him. And yet, when he sees what the guy's done by manipulating all these accounts in order to suck up to the people who owe money, which is what he's doing, because he knows he needs somebody to rely on later because he needs a couch surf, right? The manager goes, I kind of admire what he just did. He doesn't hire him back. He's smart. But, you know, as parents, we've had those moments when we're in the same moment that we're grounding our child, sometimes, there, it's still in the back of your head. Somebody's calling. <laughs> so at that moment, you still want them grounded, but you're kind of admiring of how they did give them. That's right. And that's sort of the story that we have going on here, right? <laughs> so what God is calling us to do in this is use your powers for good. <laughs> instead of evil. That's sort of the point to the story overall. But he's also being really specific about something else, and that is how do we do what we do for good, given the pressure of our world, and it's, it hasn't changed from 2,000 years ago, there's still that pressure to get by and that relies on money. So how do we do what we do for good in a world that surrounds us with temptations. See, money's neutral. Money's not good or bad. It's just there. Everybody goes, oh, the, the love, you know, money's the root of all evil. No, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. Again, it's what are you going to do with what you got, right? So, Jesus is pretty clear here that if you see money as a temptation, you're going to have to make a choice. Are you going to serve that temptation? Or are you going to serve God in that? And that's where we make those decisions one by one every day. Is what I'm doing serving God? <laughs> or is it serving myself or somebody else? I love the Bob Dylan song. You will hear it in the church. because It's not really singable, but I really love it. <laughs> and Bob Dylan writes, you've got to serve somebody. Might be the devil, might be the Lord, but you got to serve somebody. Because that's the human condition. So when we think about those temptations in our life, and so many times those temptations do revolve around money or power, and those are almost inextricably linked, who are we going to serve in that? How are we going to use our power, our money, for good? We've got to pay our bills. That's a good thing. Right? Being responsible for what we can give is a good thing. But there are times for some of us where we have a little extra. So what do we do with that? I'm so proud of this group. Because one of the very first things we decided to do when we found out that we were getting that, that generous blessing from LA, one of the very first things we decided to do was use it for the youth homeless center. That's what church is. That's what church is. That's what ministry is. That's what serving is. Not what cool things can we do for us, but wow, what are we going to do with this to serve God? You know, people who win the lottery, the suicide rate for, for lottery winners is actually extraordinarily high. I think there's an expectation, oh, if we win the lottery, life is good, and everything's hunky-dory, fine. But you know what? It's just money. It yeah. doesn't fix everything. If there's a problem in your life, money is not necessarily going to fix it. Now, if you can't pay your rent, money will fix that. Let's get real. Okay? But if you're having problems in a relationship, money's not going to fix that. You have a problem in your relationship, not a problem with money. Yeah. If you have a problem with your kids or with your parents, money's not going to fix that. In fact, it can make it worse, depending on the attitude. Because the heart of the matter is not the cash. It's who you're serving. Right? Mm -hmm. And these things are linked together. So how do we make those decisions about who we're going to serve? And about how we're going to do that? Well, I think it's, it's fairly easy to go to the scripture. You know, if you were to take, and, and Jim Wallace writes about this in, in, he wrote a book called God's Politics. 
they said as a young person in, in college, he and some friends had gotten together and they were Christians and they were having these discussions. They went and literally took a pair of scissors and cut out all the verses about the poor and about giving to the poor. Over 300 of them. As you can imagine, the, the scripture got pretty thin after cutting out 300 passages. Because that's how much God understands what we're dealing with and what we're to do. That we are all dealing with finance and money to some degree, but also what are we to do about that? We're to serve the poor. Downtown Salt Lake is an amazing place to drive through. You know, it always fascinates me because I see all these news stories about how Salt Lake has solved the homeless problem. And I'm like, really? Have you been down there? Because there are homeless people all over the place. All over the place downtown. We haven't solved that problem. When we have homeless people, we have not solved the homeless problem. Now, it's multi-layered. There are lots of issues to deal with in homelessness. Yes, there are a handful of people who want to be homeless. I've met a couple of them. Talked to a couple of them. This is back in Colorado. Who enjoy the freedom that came with that. And they have their own reasons for that. There's some things that happen in their life, but the majority of people out there don't want to be necessarily in the streets. A lot of them want help. And a lot of them want help with other things, with mental health issues, with drug abuse issues, with domestic violence issues. But you know what? God didn't hand out a survey in the scripture and said, okay, if this is why they're homeless, you can help them. And if this is why they're homeless, don't worry about it. You will not find that. It's not there. God just says help. Yep. I've been told by by people of a more conservative bent, oh, don't give them money because they're just going to go buy alcohol or drugs with it. Really? Well, first of all, that's not my problem. When I give them money, they might well be buying a murder. But whatever they do with it is up to them. I get the answer for what did I do with it? Did I give to the poor? Over and over again, Scripture says, care for the widow and orphan. Care for the poor. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel says, this is the sin of your sister Sodom, if you want to talk about what a sodomite is. That they had pride, fullness of bread, and neither did they strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. You want to know what a sodomite is? It's somebody who's greedy. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot more sodomites than we realized. Which is a sad commentary and yet true. Right? So we're really going to serve with what we have. And sometimes that's hard. Because the lines aren't always clear. Is it okay for me to take that $5 on Tuesday, go to the movie. Century 16, they're $5 every Tuesday. <laughs> Just so you know. Is it okay for me to do that or do I need to hand it to the guy on the street? You can also take care of yourself. And sometimes that's what you do, is you can, man, life is just in that place and I'm going to the movie so I don't kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a break in life. And that's okay. Taking care of yourself is okay. Mm -hmm. It's not about the amount of money. Because you can be poor and greedy. Or you can be rich and generous. It's not about the money itself. Mm -hmm. It's about who are you serving with it. Are you serving God with your heart? Which leads you to serve God with what you have. Or are you serving the bank? Are you serving that instinct to clutch everything tightly and not let go. And if you look at somebody and they're in this position that does not look joyful. But spiritually and emotionally, that's what a lot of people look like. They're trying so hard to hang on to everything they've got. But they can't do this. They can't be open to the blessings that are coming at their life because they're so clenched. They're blowing right by them. Because the real blessings have nothing to do with your bank account. Mm 